Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take democracy away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't let hypocrisy stay. Donald Trump, you're fired. Bernie Sanders, you're hired. Higher, higher, fire, fire, fire. In cast the outcast. Outcast the incast. Decrease the corporation. Increase cooperation. Incast the outcast. Outcast the incast. Decrease the corporation. Increase cooperation. Single payer now. How, how, how. Non profit public service. Health care. I'm not a customer. I'm a citizen. 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 Fragile sense of fragile self. Sense of fragile self. Intangible sense of desire, desire for wealth. Desire for wealth. Desire for Authentic wealth. ejaculation of my soul. Molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll. Blowing status quo. Incast the outcast, outcast the incast. Decrease the corporation, the corporation increase the cooperation. cooperation. Thrive on Thrive deadline, on deadline. Alive in headline. Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the cring. Catch the wind song spiral drive, crack the code, left and right node. I wander and I wander, tripping over grasshoppers, moon haulers, key robbers. Enchanted lands, smoky hands, rough and cracked. Take this sand and stand alone, all one. I present the present, desert the desert. Exercise, bring exorcism, cleanse. Shuka shuka, shuka shuka, shuka shuka. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Shred the pain, drain the stain. Oh, just take me away to Spain. Gaining light, a healthy flight for freedom and engracing grace moon shone face speak not too loud but proud paradox paradox through the dark and the hard cock sharks in the dark in the dark me embarking on an odyssey of synchronicity thunder moon thunder moon light thunder moon stack light Suicide spiral staircase, moonstone sand dune, sandstone moon dune. High bloom through the ho- high bloom through the roots, in cahoots, sliding doors, eyes adore. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams. Inner energy, life force, come forth. Black fire, feather rain, straining the stream of consciousness again. Volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain. Down the drain in chains again? No, here to stay. Healing reveals the dreams. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring podcast. I think I'm on number 20 now. I'll do another poem now. Trying to sync with the rhythm. 
Lost am I. An outsider am I. Never scratching my itch at times I'd rather die. And I sigh. It should be fashion to have compassion for the self-indulgence dares me, scares me. Neglected. Shanny panny boopy doopy freaky jeeky. Projected. Past, present, future. Please have faith in the spark of your birth. You have worth. San Diego ocean beaches. Sandy dunes. Tunes of dad strumming guitar. Mom spinning the potter wheel. Uh -huh. Shanny makes mud pies in the backyard. Scarred perhaps by divorce and neglect. Left alone in grandma's house with television, my friend. Plenty of chocolate chips to stuff my belly and deny my emotional needs. The zoo on Tuesdays with Grandpa. Waldorf salad again. I'll get you, my pretty, and your microphone, too. Love, pain, anger, fear, shame. Am I to blame? Fuck it, give me some sugar cane. Oh, you don't really have any problems. You're hallucinating. Grow up. Feel it. Don't let anyone steal it. Move on. Revolve. Dissolve. Evolve. <sighs> Heil Trumpler. Heil Trumpler. Heil Trumpler. When he says radical Islamic terrorist, I think that that pretty much spreads the fear message and the fear agenda similar to Hitler spreading fear about communism and Jewish people. It's pretty scary stuff going on. Who knows what's going to happen next? Boy, it sure is hot here at the Will Turn Theater, ain't it? Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Tame the shame. Tame the shame. Suck the sugar cane. So, intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. So, as I'm recording this, it is February of 2017. And I recently had an upsetting experience. But I got through it. I had a modeling mix-up with one job, and then I had an acting job that I was maybe going to get, and then I didn't get because of a mix-up, and it's mostly my fault. <clears throat> Excuse me while I cough. <clears throat> Excuse me while I clear my throat. Excuse me while I clear my throat. I just want to build a moat around me. I just want to build a moat around me. I just want to hide in my own little world with my kitty, Kisun. Kisun, kitty, kitty. I love you, Kisun. He's a good boy. I live by myself. I have a nice landlord. I still have a boyfriend in my life. It's a miracle. He's a pretty nice guy. We're very, very different in some ways. And yet we seem to be staying together. He's a musician and a photographer. I'm going to perform. And I'm nervous. I have about, she said, seven minutes total. So I only have about four minutes or three minutes to do a poem. <clears throat> and then the other three or four minutes will be her interviewing me on stage. I'm in a variety show with other musicians. So I'm not really a musician per se. <clears throat> My voice is really hoarse today. <clears throat> I keep coughing. I keep coughing. <clears throat> I went to my mom's house yesterday <clears throat> on Whidbey Island where I grew up. And we looked at old family photos. And before my grandmother died, she saved family photos and gave a box to my mom. And then my mom and I looked at the box of photos and art yesterday, and I posted a bunch of them on my 
on my Twitter and my Facebook. So it was interesting to see a mishmash of art and writing that my mom and I both did as kids and pictures of us as kids separately. My mom looked a lot like me as a baby, very interesting. My dad looks a lot like me as well. What do you think? Go to think, shudder to think. No, you know, my great grandfather lived to like 103 and apparently his sister lived to 102. So I have pretty good DNA in terms of longevity. My concern is my mental health. I eat really healthy and exercise. I eat diatomaceous earth and I exercise, but I have a lot of emotional stress, OCD, rapid cycle moods, a tendency towards borderline, personality disorder. So, <clears throat> but I'm pretty high functioning. I just need to learn to validate myself. Need to drink some more tea and coffee. Did you know? <clears throat> Did you know I'm having a spot of tea? Did you know that the hardest thing about being a full-time freelance art model is the fact that I get offered jobs at the last minute when someone else cancels and I have to drop what I'm doing and basically my personal life suffers because thankfully I don't have much of a personal life, but I have one boyfriend and not too many other friends that I actually hang out with, but that's my choice because I'm kind of a loner and kind of an introvert and I have a lot of anxiety. So what I tend to do is work every day and I'm always on call and I recently missed a few modeling gigs because the timing didn't work out and I like it better when people book me in advance and I have to do my income tax and I think I owe about seven or nine hundred dollars or maybe even up to twelve hundred dollars in income tax. Isn't that crazy? Because a lot of my income is ten ninety nine. I only make about fifteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, I think that's after taxes, or I don't even know if that's after taxes, but whatever. I'm just doing my turbo tax, turbo charge tax. So I got to pay my income tax, 1099 and W4s or W2s or whatever the heck they're called. So I got an automatic feeder for my cat. I got an automatic feeder for my cat. I got an automatic feeder for my cat. So. It feeds him four meals, and I, f I feed him mostly raw, frozen meat food, so that's not safe to leave out. So the first automatic f meal that I feed him is frozen, free frozen, frozen meat that I put in a frozen chicken heart and frozen uh, some kind of meat, put it in the first compartment, and then the second, third, and fourth is air-dried raw meat that is safe to leave lying around for a while because it comes in a dry goods bag sealed up and it's safe to leave out because I was recently gone for over 24 hours. I had my dad checking on my cat and feeding my cat and then my auto feeder kicked in and made sure he got some snacks when I was gone and I think he was happy about that. How are you guys doing? I'm a little bit stressed out today. Yeah, I'm pretty stressed out. Oh my God. This is Hollow Earth Radio. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen on Hollow Earth Radio. Thanks for hosting me. I feel really strange today. I am sitting in my pajamas. But you know, someone told me I should say, I'm sitting here naked. This is Shannon Kringen and I'm sitting here naked. I'm the naked lady from Public Access TV. I used to body paint myself and dance around naked. I'm so sad that I missed uh, an acting job where I was going to go to a, a video studio and shoot a video all day with these other people and make about $200. Of course, I have to pay taxes on that. So what is that? Probably only about $160, but it still would have been a good wage for the day as well as fun to be in a video that might go viral online. But, oh well, missed that opportunity because of me and my indecisiveness and my, and my wanting to be loyal to some art person that hired me. And then I found out that they didn't really hire me on that day and we got our signals crossed. So I could have done the acting thing, but then I missed it because they found other people and then it was too late for them to recast me. So I missed out on that. So now I got to accept that and move on. And 
And I wish that I had more of a sense of inner strength, inner strength, inner strength. Give me the inner strength that I need to feel strong and centered within myself and not so much like I'm at the mercy of what's around me. I feel like I spend a lot of time feeling on edge, waiting for the next call. You know, my schedule tends to book up, but for over 20, for about 25 years, actually, I started modeling in 1992 and I've been making a full-time living as a model and a freelance person since 1997. I guess that actually is a full 20 years of being full-time on call, basically having a very, very random schedule and it has worked out and I do a very good job at it but I feel nervous and stressed and I'm on edge. So I wish that I could feel more secure within myself, not quite as affected by what's around me on the outside when I get a call or a text about work. Even when my boyfriend texts me and says, when are you going to come over, when are you going to visit, part of me is happy that I have a boyfriend that I can go visit and part of me is worried about, okay, when am I going to see him again? As if I'm like sort of competitive and wanting to earn points or get, get my quota in or something. It's like, what do I really want to do with my life? You know, I'm on this planet. When I was sitting with my mom looking at all of my old artwork and my childhood photos, I noticed and remembered that every piece of art I made, I signed. I know that probably my kindergarten and first grade teachers and all that probably told all of us, sign your work so we know it's you and date your work so we know it's you. But I also know that I signed and dated a lot of my artwork because I've always wanted to be famous. I always thought, I'm Shannon Kringen. This is what I drew today. <laughs> and I remember... Right, maybe I just didn't get enough attention as a kid, or maybe I just was born with a certain desire to have an audience, a certain desire, because in some ways I'm very shy, don't like to go to parties, don't smoke, don't drink, I'm a goody-goody two-shoe, I'm sort of like a naked Amish person, is that what I am? I'm a naked Amish person, and I think Donald Trump is the new Hitler, so... Put a pipe and smoke it. Put a pipe in your hat and smoke it. Now, what do they say? <laughs> put that, put put a pipe and smoke it? I don't even know what they say. What's that thingy Mick Jagger's saying? In high school, I impersonated Mick Jagger. I even wrote a letter to my mom when I was like, I think I was like 20, maybe I was only eight. To actually, no, you know what? I was only 19 years old. <clears throat> I wrote my mom this letter <clears throat> and I said that my life was very balanced. <clears throat> And that I was keeping up with my diet, my exercise. You know, when I say diet, I mean healthy eating, exercise, homework, minimum wage job at a pizza place. What else was I doing? Going to school full time, studying graphic design. And I was telling her that my Mick Jagger impersonations, I was keeping up with my Mick Jagger impersonations as if that was like a normal thing that I had to do. I think that's really funny. I used to be able to imitate Mick Jagger really well and dance around and do his mannerisms. I really like the way he dances. So there it is. So, oh yeah, Tom Petty widens my jetty. Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me. Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but names us. Neil Young washes away the fertile dung. This has been sung. Goddess Kring, bada boo, bada bing, let it seep from deep within. Intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Self abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. So there's some Kring speak for you. So I was just noticing that when I looked at my artwork from my childhood days and my photos, I just remember that I've always wanted to be famous and it's even embarrassing to say that out loud because it sounds so silly like what's the point of being famous unless you're actually contributing something to the world. My favorite famous people seem to be 
uh, visionary thinkers like Bernie Sanders, Temple Grandin, uh, Jimmy Carter, who else? Marion Williamson, Hunderwasser, my favorite painter, architect, philosopher. So when I say, and Tom Petty and Tori Amos, and like, you know, fa famous musicians and artists and actors and singers and dancers and visionary scientists, Deepak Chopra and Oprah Winfrey and people that are trying to spread a positive message, you know, Wayne Dyer, may he rest in peace. People trying to spread a positive message, pretty much the opposite of Donald Trump, who generally spent, spreads a very negative message. When he says, make America great again, that's a fine thing to say, perhaps, although it sounds too much like a football team to me, like cheerleading, but I'm just thinking that if we kick out all the illegal immigrants that come here from Mexico that are desperate for jobs, that are willing to work for low wages, what do you think that's going to do to the jobs in the agriculture industry? The farmers that hire workers from Mexico that are willing to work for low wages that are undocumented. Now, only American citizens are going to be available to be hired by those people. And do you think that regular American citizens are going to want to make $5 an hour? Or I don't even know how much they pay them, but lower than regular wages, correct? And it appalls me that our federal minimum wage is only seven twenty-five an hour. So my fear is that we kick out all the illegal immigrants, which is pretty harsh if you ask me, especially if it separates families. I think there should be a better way to do that, a better way to try to organize our system a little better in terms of immigration. Do you really think that regular American citizens are going to want to make the really, really low wages that Mexican people make when they come here? Because compared to what they make in Mexico, I guess it's a good wage. But Americans, well, actually, our federal minimum wage is only seven twenty-five an hour. So is that how much they're going to have to pay the legal American workers, the agricultural people? They're going to have to pay them at least seven twenty-five an hour if they can even afford to pay them that. And then the price, the price of our food is going to go up. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh my gosh. But I just feel really, really weirded out. And I was going to say why I admire Jimmy Carter. Recently, I saw an article where it said that Jimmy Carter and his wife are leasing 10 acres of their land. And they are having a huge solar power plant built on their land and this power plant is like mega 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 megawatts i don't know electric speak but i read the article and it said that it will basically generate it's huge on 10 acres a solar power plant will generate enough electricity or kilowatts or whatever they call it to power 200 homes in the local town and there's only 215 towns in houses in the town. So most of the town, like 95% of the town will be powered by this solar power. How cool is that? And it won't pollute. And it's not a risk to the planet. It's not like nuclear power or fracking or coal or oil. It's actually just solar panels that are going to get the sun's energy and soak it up and generate it out. So if I was king of the world, if I was going to make America great again, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, President of the United States, I would put people to work building solar plants. And I would put people to work nationwide cleaning up the water system, fixing the bridges and the potholes and the infrastructure, fix all the crumbling infrastructure in the United States of America. I would cut the military budget way down, cut the war budget way down. I would expand Medicare to cover all, single payer nonprofit health care for all. I would abolish all private health care for profit companies. Health insurance companies would all be abolished. There would just be single payer health care and it would be federal. And the federal minimum wage would be at least ten dollars an hour, if not twelve dollars an hour. I'm thinking federal minimum wage should be $12 an hour and it should kick in on all 50 states. But the main thing I would be excited about doing would be to install solar power plants. I would be wanting to build solar power plants all over the country and put solar panels on everyone's roof 
and everyone's office building would have solar panels and there would be cleaning up of the water. The pipes in Michigan would be cleaned. I've heard that it would take millions and millions and millions of dollars to fix the crumbling water pipe system in the United States, but that's worth it because there are people getting very sick from bad water, even in this country, which is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And I was told when I went to the artesian well the other day where I get my water, which is amazing because it doesn't have any fluoride or chlorine in it and it comes from the earth. And I feel so lucky that I live in a place that has clean water that I have access to. I was in line with this man who was getting water and he was telling me that he was going to the Philippines to help them install clean water filtration systems in some wells in the Philippines where they don't have safe water in these small villages. And he was telling me that at least 20% of humans don't even have access to safe drinking water. And, and even when they do have access to water, they have to walk several kilometers just to get the water that may or may not even be safe for them to drink. And I was thinking how sad that was and how so much money is spent on war and so-called fighting terrorism and so-called prison military industrial complex. And so much money is paid to CEOs of wealthy corporations who don't even pay taxes. And how much money is wasted on things like that. And how it would be so nice if we could take the money wasted on things like that and turn it around and use it to install solar panels and clean up the water system. Worldwide, I know just me in the United States, see when he says make America great again, when Trump says make America great again, I find that very sad because I'm not a nationalist. I'm an American citizen and I'm happy to be living in the United States most for the most part. But I'm not like proud of my country like this is the best country in the world. I, I just don't. It's not a football team. I think that every country has its pros and cons. And the United States is just one country on this planet. And it's a good country in some ways. And it's also got a dark side. And I would be a lot more proud to be an American if we had single payer health care. And if we would clean up our water infrastructure and, and fix our bridges and our potholes and our roads and have better mass transit and high speed trains. Every time I've been to Europe, I've been so um, amazed at how beautiful their mass transit is, their trains, even just bike racks and pay phones, public pay phones are clean and they have phones and they have really good bike racks. I've been to Norway, Austria, France, Italy, Belgium. I've been to Brisbane, Australia. I've been to Mexico. I have been to England, Scotland, uh, just various different countries. And I have friends that live in these different countries. And I visited them and asked them about how their healthcare works and their mass transit system. In Norway, people get higher wages. They do pay higher taxes than we do here in the United States, but they also get higher wages than we do. And they also have health care and not no big medical bills and better mass transit, better trains, more bike racks. Roads looked pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. So there's different ways to do things. I also admire certain things about Cuba about how they give all their citizens health care and that the health care system is not a for-profit system. The drawback to that is that there are some people who have medical degrees in Cuba and instead of being a doctor and practicing medicine because they won't get paid very much, they end up being a taxi driver because they can make more money. And I say this because I know an American artist who went to Cuba uh, as part of an art trip and she talked to the taxi driver who said he actually had a degree in medicine and he didn't make very much money as a doctor so he decided to be a taxi driver because he can make more money. So that's a little sad but the fact that they give all their citizens health care and that it's a not-for-profit system just seems a lot more humane to me and I know that Cuba sends a lot of doctors when there's a crisis in the world a lot of Cuban doctors are flown to other countries to help other countries and that's something we in America don't hear a lot about. So Cuba does some good things. So there that is. So I'm not into falling for propaganda. So these are some of my ideas. So I just wish we could have solar panels everywhere. I almost want to just take matters into my own hands and 
spend more time in my life doing things that I believe in and I care about. Recently, I like I, I believe in nutrition and exercise and health, and I, I eat diatomaceous earth for as a nutritional supplement. It's got a lot of minerals in it. It's supposed to cleanse your body and cleanse your colon. I feed my cat raw meat diet that I get at the health food pet store. And I just recently, I have like about 15 or 20 house plants, some of them very large. And I recently got some bigger pots and some plant food and some fresh soil. So I'm excited and happy to repot my plants and make them happy and feed them lots of good minerals and nitrogen, etc. Maybe it would be good if I got more involved with people that are into recycling and composting and being eco-friendly, but I'm not a huge group person. I belong to a creative writing group and we meet every week. Uh, but mostly I like to be on my own, I'm, me and my cat. And so when I was at my mom's and we looked at my old artwork um, and my writing, I used to write poems as a kid and I looked at some of the things that I wrote and I did as a kid and I just remember feeling like I always wanted to have an audience and I always wanted to like everyone to know, like I actually wanted a sign on the outside of our car saying, I'm Shannon Nicole Kringen and I love to go to the zoo with my grandpa on Tuesday and I love seals. Like I, like I wanted to actually speak to an audience and what's funny is that I was always shy in school and afraid to raise my hand and afraid to, afraid to ask for help. And in high school, I shocked everybody by performing She's So Cold. I lip synced by the Rolling Stones, She's So Cold, and strutted around and stuck my butt out and stuffed the microphone down my pants and thrust it in a very sexual manner in front of my whole high school. And I shook my body and was very sexual in front of my high school. And it was the funnest thing I ever did. And maybe part of me was being rebellious and part of me was expressing a little bit of anger at the sexual repression that we have in our culture to some extent. But then again, people are obsessed with sex. But at the same time, I think we repress our sexuality, which ties into the whole nudity thing and the whole naturism thing that I'm involved with. So I don't know. I just have all these different thoughts and feelings about sexuality and nudity and being an art model and what else I don't know it's just I've just always felt like I was a little bit shy and a little bit afraid and needed more validation and encouragement needed someone to cheer me on a little bit more kind of always wanted to have like stage parents that would kind of encourage me to go on stage but instead I had sort of the opposite well my mom she has no desire to be on stage she's a visual artist and she's really into Eastern philosophy and non-duality, but she's not into performing or being on stage. So she, she could not encourage me in that way because she's not comfortable with that. My dad, on the other hand, used to want to write, he wrote comedy and music, but he never really got on stage. But he was an amazing tennis player, and he met Paul Servino and actually taught tennis to Paul Servino in the 80s. You know, the actor Paul Servino, that's Mira, Mira, Mira Servino's dad. He was in the movie Reds with Warren Beatty. He's very famous. He was in Star Trek recently, I think. And I don't know the other movies. He's been in like mafia movies, probably with Robert De Niro and stuff like that. But my dad had uh, taught tennis to Paul Servino. And Paul Servino was telling my dad that he was very clever and very funny because my dad was testing out his comedy on Paul Servino. And Paul is like, hey, you know, you're a good writer. You're, you're unique. You're clever you know, come down to Hollywood and I'll introduce you to some people and the rest is up to you. Because my dad was thinking that he could be a comedy writer behind the scenes because he didn't really want to get up on stage. You know, he was too nervous to do that and didn't want to be scrutinized on stage. But he liked the idea of writing comedy for other people. But my dad never pursued that. So I guess he didn't really want to do that enough. And he used to write folk music. And he's written a few songs. One of them almost became the theme song to a, a B Hollywood movie. Forgot the name of it. Little Miss Marker or something. He wrote a song called Slow Down. And then the producer changed their mind at the last minute. So to make a long story short, my dad sort of had some performance uh, dreams about doing comedy and music, but he never really fully pursued that. He just, he did some recordings and wrote some songs. Whoa. He did some recordings and wrote some songs, but he never really pursued that. So therefore, 
my dad sort of understands my desire to be on stage, but it comes and goes. There's times when I feel very, very introverted and like I have no desire to be on stage, no desire to have an audience. But then here I am right now talking into a microphone, recording my voice and putting it on a public radio station website. And I put this on Hollow Earth Radio. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Hollow Earth Radio, as well as my YouTube channel, my Mixcloud website and Bandcamp, and what is the other one? Patreon. I make <laughs> I make about three dollars a month on my Patreon, but I don't really try very hard to do that, so I won't even publicize that now. But let's just say that thankfully I make a living as an art model, and I've done some acting, and I've done some focus groups, and I've gotten paid to I get paid to work with medical students and art students. So basically, I make an okay living, low income, but I'm making a living doing that. So I don't need to make money with my art. I don't need to to be commercial with my art. And in fact, I like free culture. I like Creative Commons licenses. I've had a lot of my photos published, even on the Bill Moyers, NPR. K-U-O-W, um, K, K-C-T-S, I don't even remember, but there's a lot of different websites, BuzzFeed, a lot of different websites, some of them national, some of them international, and other countries have published a lot of my photos because I put them, I have a Flickr website and I offer all my photos free to publish. If you go to shannonkringen.com or you just Google Shannon Kringen or Goddess Kring, you'll see a lot of my photos and they're on my Flickr and my Instagram and my Twitter and my Google Plus and all my social media. I offer my photos and my videos and these podcasts are free. Non-commercial, free, creative comments, share and share alike. I think free culture is a good thing in this capitalist world we live in where most things are all about making money and making a profit and being competitive. It's nice to have some things in the world that aren't about that. And then today I'm even going um, to deliver groceries. One of my new part-time experimental jobs I'm doing is grocery delivery, (laughs) which doesn't really pay very well, but it's kind of fun to go shopping for other people and deliver food to them. And I make okay money doing that. And I only do it about one day a week right now because I have so many other modeling gigs for art, art classes and and medical uh, students work with me and practice uh, being um, doctors with with patients. We pretend to be patients. They hire men and women to pretend to be patients. And they sometimes give us a script and we act out medical conditions and they have to guess what's wrong with us and test their palpation skills, their physical exam skills, as well as their verbal skills and their diagnosis skills. So it's interesting to see how medical students learn. I'm also nervous because I have to pay my taxes and go to the dentist and apply for, um, I have really, really good Obamacare because I'm low income, but it only covers a certain amount of fillings and x-rays and cleanings. And I was told that I have a crack in one of my teeth so it's better to cap it before it falls apart, but I think that will be $1,000 and it's not covered by my health care. So what I need to do is either fly to Costa Rica like my dad and get my teeth worked on because it's cheaper even with airfare and a hotel to go to Costa Rica <laughs> than it is to stay in the United States or go to Poland. I know somebody that, that brings his wife and kids to Poland and they visit relatives and they all go to the dentist together because it's a nice family vacation and it's good uh, dental care at a good price, low cost. So there it is. So that's some of my ramble for today. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. And then I also model for medical students. Um, They practice doing breast exams and gyne exams. And again, they practice their physical palpation skills as well as practice their uh, language because when a uh, when a doctor is examining you, they're supposed to say that you look healthy, not that you look good, because they don't want it to be misconstrued as flirtatious or personal. They want to keep it very medical and very clinical. So they say, "I'm going to check and examine and palpate and make sure that you're healthy," even though they're looking for lesions and all kinds of like weird, you know, abnormalities and problems. They don't want to alarm you, so they say. I'm just going to check and make sure you're healthy. 
I'm going to check and make sure everything is normal. So they have to practice that language because a lot of them say things like looks good or um, or if they get a weird look on their face, if they see some red thing on your skin, they're supposed to just keep a poker face and stay calm and tell you what's going on without alarming you. So basically medical students, you know, before they work on real patients, they need to practice with us. So I'm happy that I get to do that work. So I do that and then I model for art classes, drawing, painting, photography, sculpture, mostly drawing, painting, and, and sculpture, and not a whole lot of photography. So there that is. So that's how I make my living. Hopefully I'm 48 now. Maybe I can do it for another 20 years. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty healthy. My neck and shoulders have some pain in them. Um, I need to do more stretching, but I keep myself pretty healthy with exercise. And you know what's funny is people think that you only need to exercise three days a week and they act as if as if it's so hard to do more than three days a week of exercise. And what strikes me as funny about that is that people eat seven days a week, people sleep seven days a week, and people drink water or some kind of liquid seven days a week, right? So it, it occurs to us that we eat, sleep, and drink seven days a week. We brush our teeth, hopefully, every day. And yet when it comes to exercise, we think, well, I can maybe exercise three days a week. You know, that's all I need to do. So I, my philosophy is that it's best to exercise, you know, unless you have a physical ailment. But even then, if you, if you have some kind of physical problem or illness, just moving every day, you know, you breathe every day, you sleep every day. So why not get some form of exercise every single day, even if it's just walking for five minutes or dancing, you know, put a song on your stereo that you like and just dance around for five minutes, you know, if you're, if you're not physically able to do more. But since people can eat and sleep and brush their teeth every day, why not exercise seven days a week? And maybe not vigorous, maybe three days a week, do something a little bit more vigorous. And if your muscles get really sore, maybe the next day, just go for a slow, leisurely walk just to get your blood flowing. I tend to have a lot of mood swings. So I tend to think if I exercise every day, I'm doing it as much for my mental health as for my physical health, because when I walk, it kind of clears my head. And it kind of calms me down when I'm too hyper or angry. And it kind of wakes me up if I'm cold or if I'm depressed and I feel tired and lethargic. If I exercise, I get the endorphin high. If I do at least 20 minutes of cardio. What I tend to like to do is I don't really like belonging to gyms. So what I do, because I don't want to spend the money and I don't want to have to go somewhere, like drive somewhere. I like to just walk around my own neighborhood. Or if I'm running errands, I like to park really far away for free. And then I walk to wherever I'm going to get the exercise. So I would say exercise to me doesn't necessarily mean going to a gym it means just moving, walking, riding my bicycle and or walking all over the place, like walking up steep hills. Whenever there's an elevator, but I have the choice of using the stairs, I tend to take the stairs for the exercise. It's really, really good to climb up a few flights of stairs to get your legs going. So I feel like my whole body, my circulation from head to toe feels better if I walk. I like to walk for a full hour. So a good 60 minute walk is so good for you. And it just, my arms and legs feel better. My whole body from head to toe feels more energized. And my brain feels like it's thinking smarter thoughts. I, f I swear, I feel like my IQ actually goes up if I walk. So, cause I, I can get in some really bad moods. I can get into some really negative funks in my own head. And if I walk, it seems like it's maybe just the endorphins. I don't know, but it seems like if I go for a walk and get my blood flowing, my heart rate up, I start thinking wiser thoughts. There must be some scientific truth to that. I also don't eat any wheat or grains. I quit while well, I eat occasional rice and occasional oats, uh, but I don't eat any wheat. And I don't eat any bread and I don't eat wheat free. I recently actually, I should say, sometimes I cheat a little bit and I went and uh, got some uh, gluten free cookies that were made with rice flour, 
which weren't necessarily healthy. Actually, some of them were made with almond flour, which I think is a lot healthier than rice flour. Rice flour is high glycemic index. But what almond flour, there was these almond cookies that were dipped in chocolate from my favorite store, Trader Joe's. And I went there and got these amazing cookies and ate them with my mom, shared them. So that was kind of a splurge. But I was going to say, generally, I don't eat any wheat or bread. And if I have the urge for pizza, I don't really eat cheese anymore now either. I feel better without dairy. I eat occasional ice cream, but I try to get the coconut, coconut kind. And I don't buy any like milk or cheese anymore. But when I get the urge for pizza and I can't get the craving to go away, I get a slice of pizza and I throw away all the bread. Like I just peel off the cheese and the tomato sauce and the toppings. And I just eat that with raw onions and some greens. And that's my way of eating pizza. I've tried the gluten-free pizza, but that's full of potato starch and rice flour, which is just really high in carbs. So basically, I used to have an underactive thyroid briefly, and they put me on medication for it. And to make a long story short, after <clears throat> after going off wheat for six months, the doctor told me, you need to go off your thyroid meds because we're over-treating you. <clears throat> And the only, the only thing I did was I stopped eating all wheat and all bread. And I, I guess I did stop eating rice as well. I stopped eating oats and rice and wheat, all grains basically. I still eat oatmeal every once in a while. And that made my thyroid levels go back to normal. So basically naturopathic doctors say the reason why that happens for some people, because I don't have celiac disease, uh, but I seem to be, I know that I'm addicted to wheat. I know that I used to eat bread and just feel like, oh my God, you know, I have to have this or I'm going to die. Like I was really addicted to it. So I crave it. I still miss bread sometimes. I like rosemary bread and olive bread and uh, toasted with butter or avocado. But I stopped all of that. And now I, I eat, I just eat avocados plain. I take a spoon and just eat avocados right out of the, the skin and just scoop it. And it's so good. It's good, healthy fat for you. So my thyroid levels, they say, okay, naturopathic doctors say the theory is some people, if they stop eating all wheat and most grains and cut way down on carbs and increase your healthy fat and your, your protein and your whole natural foods and less refined carbs, if you cut, cut way down on that, it improves your immune system. And if your immune system is really healthy as, you know, whatever your potential is, get your immune system to be as healthy as possible, and then it will help you heal and balance out from whatever else is going on. So there are people who have gotten rid of their own diabetes or, or had their insulin uh, need way, way down just from changing their diet. So it's sad to me that more medical doctors are not taught more about nutrition. It's naturopaths that are taught more about nutrition and how everything you eat affects your immune system and can affect your hormones and can affect your body's health. So if you eat healthy and exercise and get enough water, you're probably going to have your immune system be as good as it can be and then see what you can do. And then if you still need surgery or medication, then do it. And I would say even if you're taking medication and having surgery for some, for some illness, you can also eat as healthy as possible to help yourself um, heal from whatever you're going through. So I think the key to health is to have a healthy immune system. And the way to have the best healthy immune system possible is to get plenty of time out in nature with clean, fresh oxygen and air and spend time doing things that you love. Eat and sleep in a healthy way. Uh, have loving relationships with other people. You know, my mom liked to remind me, you know, to keep my spiritual center, you know, to keep in touch with not religion, not with um, superstition, but to be in tune with my heart and my soul and my, my feeling connected to nature. To me, my way of feeling a sense of God or great spirit because I'm not really religious, but I'm spiritual. And what I mean by that is I feel like my soul incarnated here to live out my destiny as Shannon Kringen and that every single person on this planet probably has their own unique mission. And we all have certain talents 
and maybe we all have certain deficits or wounds and we're all here together and yet we're all different. We're all like separate little souls, like snowflakes and fingerprints that are all different and yet we're all here together and we're all on this planet and we're just trying to express ourselves and create and I feel like when I'm in nature I feel more in tune with my individuality in a positive way not in a way that makes me feel isolated and separate from everyone see it's a paradox sometimes I feel alone when I'm with other people and when I go off and walk by myself in nature I actually feel more connected to the whole world when I'm alone in nature. So I guess I'm not really alone. I like to say all one alone, all one alone, here art heart. So when I'm with plants and animals in the ecosystem, and even just with my house plants and my cat sitting alone in my apartment with my cat and my plants, I feel a sense of connection to life on this earth. And I feel like the more time I spend away from social media, and the more time I spend away from the, especially the news media right now, whether it's mainstream news or alternative news or Donald Trump's own propaganda media machine, whatever you want to call that, it totally stresses me out to, to focus so much on what's around me externally out in the media land. You know, I feel like I need to find my center and, you know, be the change that you want to see. Take your own personal life. For me, this is what helps me is to do things in my own individual life that I think make the world a better place. So it can be overwhelming if I think too much about what's going on in the world out there that I have no control over. Although we can call our Congress officials and we can speak out and try to push for laws to change and push for single payer health care and, you know, push for more solar panels and, you know, push for whatever we believe in. We can also spend time with our family and friends, loving them, taking good care of our plants and our animals, taking good care of our own bodies and our own selves. Also remember to laugh and enjoy and listen to music or create your own music or you know, get out there and play tennis or run or sing or dance or act or play or, or study science or math or, you know, whatever you enjoy. Like, just I like to me, it's a political act to just do what I enjoy. Because if you listen too much to the news, it's so frightening and stressful to hear about what's going on. You know, they're cutting the budget of this and then they're increasing the budget of that. And it's like the opposite of what I want. You know, I want social programs to be increased. I want the war budget and the prison budget to be decreased. And they're doing the opposite. So if I listen to too much to that, I'm just going to walk around feeling so angry and so scared and so stressed out. I'm missing actually living my life. I'm missing enjoying loving my mother and my father and my cat and my boyfriend and my own artwork it's very sad to me that I've gotten so caught up in thinking I have to make money every single day, seven days a week, that I feel like I don't have time and energy for my own art. And I guess this monologue is part of my art. I would say this is part of my creative expression to just talk into the microphone right now. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to the 20th podcast of Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio. This is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to Hollow Earth Radio. Thank you for hosting me. I also put this on Patreon, YouTube, Mixcloud, and Bandcamp, and it's all free to listen. Share and share alike. My website is shanningkringen.com. And I have photos and videos and music, and I do uh, improvisational painting. I paint in a pure abstract way that's non-representational. And it's like Catch the Wind song, Spiral Drive. So when I say that, I feel like when I hear music, I see shapes. And when I paint in my pure abstract way, I think I'm inspired by the infinite intricate patterns that I see in nature when I'm out looking at plants. And I'm also very like, you know, tree bark and leaves and the shapes, you know, the fractal patterns you see in nature. 
And I'm also very inspired by music, Tom Petty and Tori Amos and Neil Young and Bob Dylan and Beck and Tom Waits and Jason Webley and Patti Smith and I don't know, like Pink Floyd and lots of different music. So I love music and uh, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and Paul Simon and Frank Sinatra and Johnny Cash and there's so many good musicians in the world, Jimi Hendrix and Miles Davis and you know, jazz and rock and blues and country and so many different kinds of music and music I haven't even heard yet, probably from other parts of the world that I, I need to be more open to. But I would say that music, let's see, what else? Music <laughs> really helps. And I'm also inspired whenever I fly in an airplane and I look down at the land from really far away and you see the little shapes. I'm thinking about Alice in Wonderland and how things look giant or miniature and it's all relative. And then I think about Thomas Edison and I think about what's his face, um, Einstein and his theory of relativity. And I think about Temple Grandin and the things that she says. And just my mind jumps around to all these different topics and how they all interrelate. And I wish there was more solar panels on the planet. And I want to say thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I'll leave you with a little bit of poetry and I'll see you next week. And remember, if you if you like my visual art, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can listen to this podcast every week for free. And you can watch uh, a visual, visual slideshow of my photos and my paintings and my artwork as a visual entertainment going along with my voice. So my message is be yourself no matter what they say. That's from a sting song called Englishman in New York from the album The Dream of the Blue Turtles, 1987. Great album. And I will say, follow your bliss. I will seal it with a kiss. Authentic ejaculation of my soul. Molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll, blowing status quo. So be yourself, no matter what they say. I'll see you next week. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. ShannonKringen.com is my website, and it links to all my other sites. Or just Google Goddess Kring or Shannon Kringen, and you'll find all kinds of photos and strange things written about me, some of them true, some of them not. Have a good week. See you next week. Thanks for listening. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This show has been digitized to hide my obscene body parts. And not a threat. And not a threat. of me sharing my naked body on the TV screen. The media is full of violence and destruction, but skin is hidden away in shame. I model nude for art classes, not rude, not crude. Art classes where the human body is still appreciated as beauty, 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 beauty.
Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. This show has been digitized to hide my obscene body parts. And not a threat. And not a threat. And not a threat. That is crazy. of me sharing my naked body on the TV screen. The media is full of violence and destruction. But skin is hidden away in shame. I model nude for art classes. Not rude, not crude. Art classes where the human body is still appreciated as beauty, 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 beauty. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring.